Close your eyes and watch your breath. Know the breath when it's coming in, know when it's going out. The breath is a universal thing that each of us has, regardless of our background, regardless of our religion or culture. And it's our safe spot inside. This is something that really belongs to us. Nobody else can feel your breath, aside from putting their finger next to your nose. But your own sensation of how the breath feels, that's something only you can know. And you can turn that into your safe spot. Living together with one another, there's bound to be good times and bad times. And you want to have a safe spot inside for both the good and the bad times, so that you don't get careless in the good times and you don't get let the bad times get you down. So you need something really solid, because the world spins around us. There's gain and then there's loss. There's status, loss of status. There's praise, there's criticism. There's pleasure and there's pain. And you can't take any of these as reliable. They turn into one another very quickly. And so you want to give the mind a place where it's right there in the middle, not spinning around with everything else. And this is what the breath provides. You watch it coming in, going out, and you have the right to decide what kind of breathing feels good. Because the breath is one of the bodily processes you can have con some control over. So make use of that fact. Ask yourself when you breathe in each time, what kind of breathing feels good? Where do you feel the breathing process? Not just the air coming in and out to the nose, but also the rise and fall of the abdomen, the rise and fall of the chest, the shoulders, wherever you feel any energy flow with the breath. Stay with that and allow it to be comfortable. Maybe longer breathing might be better, or shorter breathing, deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter, faster or slower. And give, them a, give those various kinds of breathing a try until you decide you like some one particular combination, then you stick with it. Because the mind needs a good, solid place to stay, and this provides a really good place for you. And at the same time, you're developing good qualities of mind. You're developing your mindfulness, your ability to keep things in mind. You develop your alertness, noticing what's going on. And you develop a quality called, called ardency when you want to do it skillfully. And if you develop these qualities with a the breath, then it's easier to transfer them to other areas of your life. Where you go into situations where you know you have to keep certain things in mind and you're not going to forget. For instance, you keep in mind the idea that you want to be harmless. Okay, there are going to be situations where it's easy to forget that. But if your mindfulness has been trained, you're going to remember. As for alertness, whatever the situation is, and there are going to be lots of different situations in the future, the more alert you are to what's actually going on, the more likely you are to do the right thing. And then you maintain that intention to do the right thing. So you take these skills that you develop with the breath, and then you can transfer them to your life. And that way you begin to see the benefit of training the mind. So that regardless of what your background is, regardless of what your life is, when your mind is well trained, you find there's a lot more happiness. You're causing yourself a lot less harm and suffering. You're causing people around you a lot less harm and suffering, because you're well trained and signed. 